Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. So today it is finally time to add the California sea lions to our zoo. I was so excited when they were added to the game with the new pack because they are those like iconic staple zoo animals that many many zoos around the world they have them, uh, their enclosures look really really nice so I wanted to build something nice for them as well in our Elm Hill City Zoo. As you guys know, uh, during a couple of last episodes, we were building uh, enclosures for animals in the North American uh, like area of the zoo. Uh, but I decided not to include uh, the California sea lions in this area because we already had like a uh, something like you know aquatic area in this region when I am building uh, because we had the seals, the gray seals, we had the penguins. Uh, uh, both of them, the king penguins and the African penguins in the penguin house. Uh, so I decided that uh, the California sea lions should be somewhere in this area. So uh, I chose the location for their exhibit uh, to be like behind the uh, penguin house. So when the guests are arriving in our zoo, they can first go and see the gray seals, go through the penguin uh, house, and then they can go outside and see another like seal uh, so they can see the California sea lions uh, and their pool. Uh, when I uh, like started to prepare to build this habitat, I obviously did some research online on how different habitats for the sea lions look uh, in the zoos uh, around the world. And this habitat will be actually uh, like inspired by three different habitats in the United States. Uh, there are a lot of zoos in the US that house the California sea lions. They are from the US, so uh, this totally makes sense. Uh, so, the inspirations uh, for this habitat are at first the Central Park Zoo in the New York City. This is like, I think, the most iconic and well known habitat for the sea lions in the world. Uh, if you've been in New York City, you probably went to this small zoo and saw it. It is just in the middle of the zoo. It is quite a small habitat, so I didn't want to like recreate it completely because I wanted to give those guys a big like, uh, you know, habitat because I wanted to have uh, more of them because normally they live in colonies so uh, I didn't want to have just two or three. Uh, I went for six but we'll wait for those babies and I will keep them for sure uh, because they have a lot of space. But the thing that I took from the uh, Central Park Zoo uh, was the double like barrier, the double glass fence. I thought that it is so, such a great idea and that I could potentially be able to recreate that in the game, uh, so I wanted to use it. Uh, so uh, this barrier, the glass barrier that actually holds the water and is a barrier of the enclosure, uh, the water is just like uh, on the surface, like the barrier ends on the surface of the water. Uh, and the sea lions in the zoo are uh, actually able like to lean uh, with their I don't know, fins or paws, I don't know how it, how it is called, but they're limbs uh, on the glass and look at the guests. They actually don't like jump on or try to escape it. I don't know why, probably they feel that, you know, it is very high and they could potentially harm themselves in the, if they fall out of the water down there. Uh, but in the Central Park Zoo it totally works and I thought that it is such a nice idea. Of course, we'll add some drains uh, down there because, you know, the water could potentially splash and so on. So we needed those things. And then we have this like uh, additional barrier for the gas so that they cannot go too close to the animals. Obviously, uh, I'm sure that the sea lions actually could bite so it won't be... Uh, too wise to uh, go uh, too close to them to approach them so yeah there should be probably something for the guests to keep them away from those animals. Uh, so at first I wanted to create this barrier to give this habitat a nice shape and also add some uh, you know paths for the guests like pavements and so on. 
uh, it was actually a bit of the struggle, uh, like adding paths uh, to this around this habitat because uh, you know you cannot put the paths too uh, close to the very steep edges. You cannot put it too close to the path. Uh, so, uh, as you will be able to see in this video, I struggled a lot with adding the paths. Uh, they will also be not as close to the barrier that I wanted them to be, so uh, the guests won't be able to come too close to the barrier. It's a pity, but I couldn't like do anything about it, so we will have to live with that. I'm sure that you won't be able to see it actually because uh, you know after we add some more habitats the gas will just you now spread uh, and go to other things. Uh, the thing about Planet Zoo is that when you add a new animal all of the gas suddenly go there to the new habitat to watch the new animal. I won't blame them because it's something new. Uh, but yeah at first there's a crowd around the habitat so there are traffic jams. The, the, there are a lot of people so this path there uh, being so narrow it was slightly a problem but uh, yeah in the future probably there will be just a few persons around it. What I will also add will be like a small wall around this path uh, to make it a bit smaller and to add some plants. And this is where the new barriers uh, that were added with a new pack come in very handy because I could uh, just hide them uh, in those walls so that the guests wouldn't like clip through them, walk through them. Uh, the paths are very narrow right now, but still they are able to go around the whole exhibit without any problems. So the Central Park Zoo was the inspiration for the barriers, but then uh, the inspiration for the like the actual like main part of the habitat uh, was the sea lion habitat in St. Louis Zoo, also in the US. Uh, so this zoo has and this habitat in this zoo it has really nice rock structures of course made of those you know faux or fake rocks but we also have those in game so i wanted to use them um yeah those rock structures look really really good and also i uh, you know they use this this is really common they use a lot of like concrete or plaster i don't know uh for like those bays and beaches where the animals come to the water, come inside the water, like slope down. Uh, so I also wanted to uh, use that. Uh, the zoo has slightly more rocks, but unfortunately the traversable area for the sea lions is a bit crazy. Yeah, I couldn't like uh, detail this habitat just as much as I wanted it to be detailed. Uh, because they just couldn't like traverse it, they couldn't go into the water, they couldn't go into the cave that we'll build for them in the, in, at the end of this video. Uh, so it was a bit of a struggle when it comes to the traversable area and to the, you know, I like my habitats very detailed and here I had to be like very very car careful because they just couldn't use that. So uh, why building habitats that are not usable? This is a bit pointless so yeah there will be a lot of sand in the middle like plain sand but I couldn't do anything about it because adding uh, even those small aquatic rocks it's just like uh, prevented them from moving from going there uh, so yeah this was a bit of a pity but uh, oh, still at the end I like the habitat I just wish it was a bit more detailed also what I took from the zoo is the cave that I told you guys about and this cave actually leads to the backstage area so uh, it is like slightly hidden from the guests uh, the sea lions just go to this cave and then they have in my case they'll have like a holding pen and then there will be a shelter and when it comes to the shelter actually the shelter and some parts of this habitat are uh, inspired heavily by another habitat in the Smithsonian National Park Zoo, I think it is called. 
Uh, we already like had one habitat inspired by the zoo, it was the beaver habitat. And in the Smithsonian uh, Zoo, they have like this very, very modern and very new, like it was opened like very recently, uh, sea lion habitat. It is very beautiful, it is very modern. Uh, there are underwater viewing areas, there are nice shelters for the animals, you know, there are just those shows for uh, the guests and everything looks so nice and I really loved the shelter that you'll be able to see me creating. Uh, later um, so uh, definitely stay tuned because this shelter it is something that we like didn't do uh, anything like this in the uh, in the zoo it is more like themed it basically it looks a bit like waves so you know it is on the theme of being aquatic and making an aquatic animal uh, habitat I think it is still suiting to our Elm Hill City Zoo we are going here for more this like generic you know um, slightly modern but more uh, older style of the zoo so sometimes adding something that is more pleasing to the eye and more themed I think it makes sense but uh, if it doesn't fit to our zoo definitely tell me in the comments and I will change it because I went a bit crazy with this shelter uh, it is something like you will see I will tell you guys about it more when we'll be actually building it so as you can see I created those bays uh, from the plaster pieces where the animals can go into the water uh, I also added a lot of rocks I was actually able to like uh, totally like in accidentally uh, choose a really nice colors for these rocks I really like it uh, it is something like you know you would see in California like those cliffs and rocks I think that they are in similar color I never been there there but uh, this is something that I saw on the pictures and uh, you know the seals or the sea lions they have this color of their fur so that they can blend uh, into this area because they are very vulnerable uh, when they are outside of the water so they uh, are in the color like this beige and brownish color uh, that allows them to camouflage a bit to the colors of the rocks and the cliffs when they spend their time when they are uh, out of the water so I wanted to those rocks to be in this color of the sea lions basically <laughs> and I hope that I was able to like nail it. I also uh, try to work a lot with different angles of these rocks. Normally when I uh, build with them I just you know put them uh, just rotating them but in the same like uh, I don't like uh, rotate them upside down or anything I just rotate them clockwise I'm not like expert in those uh, vocabulary when it comes uh, to English language, but I'm sure that you get what I tell you. But so I try to link, you no, know, turn them in different angles just to see them from every side, and I think that it really worked here because. Uh, they really blended well together, they look like those huge rock formations, uh, not like, you know, uh, typical like separate rocks put together, basically. Uh, they just blend in together and I think it looks really, really nice. I also thought that it'll be cool uh, to create a shape, a bit of a pride rock from the Lion King. Basically, you know, they are sea lions and uh, the pride rock was for lions, like uh, like the monument that they worshipped and where the king of the lions lived. Uh, so I wanted to like achieve like slightly similar like style. I didn't like recreate the pride rock or something, but I wanted to have like this, uh, you know, sharply pointing end of the cliff where they could could potentially uh, climb and spend their time like lay in there unfortunately they can't because of the traversable area it is in, like impossible for them to go up there uh, but yeah I was going for a like slightly pride rock if it makes any sense uh, for the sea lions 
I also added a lot of uh, rocks in the underwater uh, like area for them not to like make this pool too uh, you know uh, boring so I wanted to give them some water for my some rock formations under the water uh, it wasn't too crazy because I'm sure that from time to time such pools need to be cleaned and maintained so cleaning those rocks probably would be not too pleasant for the zoo staff, but uh, yeah, I wanted it to look, uh, you know, interesting for the guests. So I went for it and I added some of the, uh, you know, small rock formations under the water and it looks so, so cool when they are diving in there and swimming. Actually, what I saw is that they spent a lot of time in the water. They are like constantly sl swimming in this, like similar to the gray seals actually, no wonder <laughs> but yeah uh, they are spending a lot of time in the water and I love it because it is so realistic they just come out to you know lay down and sleep or, or eat something if you don't give them the uh, underwater uh, like uh, feeder I obviously gave them because I love those animations and yeah, overall, I think that the, the California Sea Lion is such a cool addition to the game. Maybe it wasn't like so uh, like exciting for me, like for example, the moose or a prairie dog or a beaver. Uh, but still, uh, we had like seals. So uh, it is very similar to the seal. Of course, it ha it moves differently. Uh, they have like those uh, hind limbs that they can actually use for moving and walking a bit. The seals cannot do it. Uh, but yeah, they are still like they are. As I told you guys at the beginning, they are like iconic zoo animals. So when you go to the big zoo, you probably expect to see them. So that's why this is such a cool addition to the game, and especially for like building city zoos. Uh, because uh, this is like a typical city zoo animal like when you watch for example a, a movie and there is a Central Park Zoo they always show this pool for the uh, sea lions uh, when you uh, look up for the pictures of Central Park and Central Park Zoo always this uh, sea lion habitat is popping up so uh, yeah this is like a staple iconic city zoo animal and I am so great so like not grateful maybe but so glad that we have it now in our Elm Hill City Zoo because I think it's uh, it is just like a perfect addition in the last video I actually teased you guys a bit with a tour that I promised you uh, that we'll have soon on the channel just to update you guys on the things that I did here um, in the Elm Hill City Zoo, on the location of habitats, how is it uh, you know, positioned, everything, because we had once a tour but it was like I don't know 15 episodes, or episodes ago or something like this. Uh, so yeah, we'll have a tour uh, next episodes. I'll probably upload it on Wednesday So uh, if you are watching waiting for it definitely uh, Stay tuned because there will be a too small tour here uh, On the channel and we'll of course go through all of the new habitats We'll go to see the sea lion habitat and so on so yeah, I'm super excited and I want to show you guys the entire zoo because it is getting large right now. So yeah, I'm sure that uh, it will be a longer one because we have to go through all of the habitats. Maybe I will do uh, like more of the guest perspective because last time we did like a zookeeper perspective. So we went to all of the backstage areas and so on. And now I don't think that we'll have time for it because this video will be like, I don't know, a long one uh, I will just show you maybe the newer uh, like shelters and so on not and skip the older ones I will see uh, how it is going and how much time I will need to go through all of the habitats to give you guys some information about all the habitats uh, so yeah if you are watching waiting for that definitely stay tuned it will be as I said probably out on Wednesday so now I am creating this cave uh, that I told you guys about uh, earlier. This is a cave that will be used by animals to go into the backstage area of the um, shelter, of the, sorry, habitat. Uh, they will be able to, you know, uh, go to the holding pen and then to the shelter. 
uh, and actually I think that this cave looked good <laughs> here when we built it but unfortunately they were they are not able to go through uh, those like archways made of those rocks so I had to delete them and I had to give them bigger like entrances and by the end I preferred this version over the version that you will see in the cinematics but uh, there was nothing that I could do to make it still you know usable to make them go into the shelter and yeah we have to deal with it but uh, this is just a small detail uh, the main focus of this habitat is the water area and this is where I focus the most uh, so yeah I will also add some uh, you know broken trees branches and so on just for some details I saw that in the Smithsonian National Park zoo I think it's called uh, they also use those uh, you know different logs and uh, branches and pieces of that tree so uh, yeah I wanted also to add it because I thought it looked like a bit weird with only uh, you know uh, rocks in it although uh, the sea lions habitat like mainly look like this but uh, I always add so many plants that it was so weird for me just just not to add them at all in this habitat of course we'll have them like around we'll have it have a lot of plants on those rocks surrounding the land area of this habitat I won't include that in the video but you'll be able to see it in the cinematic shots by the end of this video when all of the foliage will appear magically <laughs> around the habitat it was actually a lot of work but you guys will also only see the finished product if I would want to show you everything, those videos will be so long because it takes me so much time to build those habitats, especially when I struggle a bit uh, to make them pretty. Because sometimes I feel like, okay, our previous habitat was so nice and I loved it, so now I have to build something equally nice and not like worse than that that we uh, like uploaded uh, last time. So. I know that it's a bit of a pressure, but for me it is actually a motivation. I don't take it like too seriously, it doesn't discourage me, but it is just me. I always want to get better and better at things uh, that I do at work on in my life or here on the channel. So um, I was not sure if this habitat is nice, to be honest, uh, like I liked it, but for me it's not like too crazy. But after adding all of the details like uh, foliage and some walls for the guests and the audience and the toilet that you'll be able to see uh, in a second, uh, I actually thought that it is looking quite nice, <laughs> but uh, maybe not as detailed as other habitats, but I think it blends well in this area of the zoo. Uh, everything looks really, really nice and cohesive, and this is what I wanted to achieve. So yeah, I, in the end, I really like this habitat. But I feel still like building, you know, a realistic habitats for aquatic animals is like very challenging in the Planet Zoo game. It is really hard to make it look like very realistic. Uh, it is totally easier to build realistic habitats for animals that don't require a lot of water because I always have like issues with those water areas. Water areas. I don't know why. Uh, it, and as I told you, it is so much easier to build something realistic, for example, for primates or for big cats or for ungulates. Uh, but yeah, this is some. I really wanted to add those guys, and this is what I came up with. And I think, I hope you guys will like it. This is also actually why I am not very like uh, excited or keen on the idea of. Uh, having aquatic animals in the planet zoo. I know that a lot of you guys like want them, request them, like to have orcas, delph dolphins and such animals, but I just cannot see like building something nice for them aside of, you know, concrete aquariums and boxes, how it is looking in the real life zoos and, uh, you know, those aquariums. 
actually I am totally against you know uh, keeping dolphins orcas and animals like that in captivity I think that it is really like harmful for them they it is depressive for them uh, they don't do well in captivity they need to have a lot a lot of space because they travel in such a long distance daily that it is so unnatural to like sit in this one spot all of their life and I am totally against it. I know still that it is a computer game and we are not harming the real animals or anything like this. But, you know, building something that doesn't really, like, uh, speak to me privately and that I am against in the real life seems somehow, like, wrong. So I am, like, not, like, super excited if it will be added. And I don't think actually that Frontier has, uh, you know, plans to make uh, like an aquatic, fully aquatic DLC, but but who knows, maybe it will change in the future, maybe we'll get something like Planet Aquarium or something. I'm totally not against fish, I have uh, like three fish tanks myself, three aquariums at my flat, because I love them. Uh, and so this is totally like it would be amazing actually to have fish tanks uh, like uh, you know sea fishes like reefs and so on but dolphins orcas and so on I'm not sure okay while I was talking you could see me uh, start to build the shelter for the California sea lions and as I told you this shelter is uh, inspired by the Smithsonian National Park in the Washington DC uh, this is actually a very very nice uh, shelter because it somehow reminds me of waves. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to recreate that and I thought that it will look really really good with our uh, little habitat for the sea lions. Uh, like the facade of this building is made of very small tiles in this like gray bluish color and I also wanted to recreate that uh, so I will use the tiles that are here in the game and they were added with the Africa pack and they are super useful for things like this the only thing that I don't like with them is that the spaces between them is white I would prefer it to be like in dark color uh, because I think that this white looks a bit weird but this is just being me and, and nitpicking so <laughs> don't listen to that so yeah I use them for the facade of this building I will for sure add you know a links in the description to this video uh, of the actual habitats that I was inspired by and you'll be also be able to see this shelter because maybe it could be you know hard to imagine what I am going for at the beginning it might look a bit crazy but I think that in the end this shelter looks really really cool I love the color of the facade I love the wooden details and I love also what is inside of it so the colors of the uh, like wooden pieces and the tiles will change a bit during this video because it didn't like sit right with me. So uh, like don't be surprised if you suddenly see uh, different colors of them because I was changing them constantly. Okay, while I am working on the shelter and also while I'll be adding some like uh, backstage stuff inside the shelter, like stalls, like a uh, like small pool for them because it is realistic to have like a pool uh, in the shelter because they just need the water to uh, be happy so uh, they have also pools in their shelter inside of the building so uh, I also wanted to give them that so while I'm doing it let me give you guys some fun facts about the California sea lions so, as I told you guys in the video, the sea lions are adapted for movement on land as well as in the water. Wing-like front flippers, because they are called flippers, like the front limbs, I didn't know that. Uh, they have a bone structure similar to uh, what is uh, in our arms and hands. Uh, swimming with those flippers propels uh, the sea lion forward while the hind flippers steer. Uh, both pairs of flippers enable sea lions to walk on land. The sea lions are actually called the lions or sea lions uh, because of their uh, loud roars. And also, the mane of some sea lion species even can grow thick manes around their necks. 
Uh, most sea lion pups are born in June. Uh, pop pups are well developed at birth. Their eyes are open, they can vocalize and even swim a little. So it's not like with the gray seal that we have in game that's uh, you know, it stays on the land. The small pups of the California sea lions can swim and they are also swimming in the game. Several days after the pup's birth, the mother leaves the pup in the crowded rockery as she searches for food in the ocean. When she returns, the mother emits a loud trumpeting vo vocalization which uh, like attracts the pup. They, uh, this exchange continues until the mother and pup finds each, each other and she makes the final identification of the pup by smelling it. The sea lions have visible ear flaps while seals have only ear holes. California sea lions may struggle with a tendency to overheat. To cool off, they uh, will rest with a flipper in the water, flip sand over their backs or fan their flippers in the water. Okay guys, as you can see, I am now working on the like inside part of the shelter, the backstage. Uh, so we'll have like the two stalls here with sliding doors and also, as I told you, this little pool for the sea lions to go into if they want to. Uh, this is very very quick and easy build of this backstage because I wanted to focus more on the outside area of uh, of this habitat to make it nice around it, not to focus so much on the inside uh, and uh, uh, you know the backstage. But still, I wanted to give them some nice things, so they'll have some bedding, some uh, you know water bowls and food bowls and uh, obviously some fences, stalls and so on. At the end of this video I will actually work on the audience for the animal talks because it is something like super staple to have like an audience next to the sea lion habitats. They are trained um, like uh, often by the keepers so they can do some basic tricks and so on. So there is an audience. Uh, in Planet Zoo we treat it more like educational. So we have an educator who is like giving the speech to the audience. Uh, so uh, I wanted to do it. Of course, many content creators did it and I also wanted to add my own audience. It will be very, very like easy, but it will be actually easy because I think that the actual audience or those you no know, steps that we got uh, with the new DLC, they are so well made, they look so, so good and that you don't have to do much things to them to like make them look good. So I added, I obviously changed the colors of them a bit, I added those, uh, you know, small fences or railings, I don't know how they are called. I also changed the colors of them and then I do, I did like a, like a roof or something like a wooden construction with a glass, uh, like a glass roof so it prevents the gas from the sun and from the rain if you know they are sitting there and the water weather is bad also you'll uh, see uh, the new toilet like magically appear in the cinematics by the end of this video I didn't show you building this toilet because I actually built this toilet a while ago I don't know if you've been here so long, but when I've built my reindeer habitat in the zoo, I also included uh, in their building like an outside public toilet or something for our guests. And uh, I actually had like several attempts of building this toilet. I wanted it to look so nice back then because, you know, I was just starting and I wanted to nail this toilet. I wanted to look it, make it look really, really nice. So I had several attempts and one of them was like okay but still not it. So I decided to save it as a blueprint and use it maybe uh, on some you know other occasion somewhere else. And I built something new for this like toilet next to the reindeer habitat. And there I thought that okay it look it is looking quite nice. I will hide it a bit in the you know forest like uh, plants and trees and uh, still it will look still it will look nice. So why not add it in here? I thought that it will look good. We have like this uh, 
not use space in there and actually I don't think that we have uh, any toilet in this area so I thought that it is a perfect spot and yeah because of it this whole area makes a bit more sense you have the audience you have the toilet and you have the California sea lion habitat maybe we'll also add something different on the other side like small shops we will see. I will of course tell you guys more about the plants, what we'll add in different places in the tour because the tour will also uh, include some plants for the future. I will tell you guys what I want to build and where. Uh, so you'll be able to see it all, all, all uh, in a couple of days. Okay guys, this is all that I have for you today. Uh, please enjoy the rest of this speed build and stay till the end because there will be uh, some cinematic shots of this entire habitat. You'll be able to see the uh, sea lions diving and you know roaming around the habitat and the shelter and so on. So definitely stay tuned if you want to see it. Also, I'll obviously do the entire area around the shell the habitat so you'll be able to see how it is looking. If you enjoyed our video today, please consider to subscribe, it would really mean a world to me. It will help our little channel to grow, so if you are not a subscriber yet, please click that subscribe button down below. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up down below, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, and comment down below if you enjoyed this video, if you have any recommendations for our future videos, or if you just have something to tell me, something you want to ask, all of the comments are welcome and I reply, uh, try to reply, reply to all of them so your comment won't be unnoticed for sure. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!